and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some encroaching shadows for our first meme tier deck today. It's Tuesday, um, but we're going to be playing some more meme tier decks. Had a lot of pretty sweet donation decks to go ahead and get to. So um, with meme tier decks, so not enough or like too many for just one day. So meme tier Monday is now going to be on Tuesday for this week as well. So this one we're going to be playing Encroaching Shadows. The Shadow Owls card grants all allies in your deck and in your hand plus two, plus two, and ephemeral. So the bad news is all your things are going to be ephemeral. So whenever you attack with them, they're going to die. But the good news is everything you have gets plus two, plus two. And so we're going to try to take advantage of that in a couple of different ways. Uh, the first one being elusives. Elusives are going to be a big part of how we're going to be finishing these games. We're going to have uh, Silent Shadow Seer, Green Glade Duo, and Navori Blade Scout. Um, so we're going to have nine powerful, uh, very cheap elusives that are going to have, you know, like two power, three power, and then Green Glade Duo can be, you know, two plus power. But then whenever we give them plus two, plus two, that starts being a whole lot of power for each one. We're going to have the Stalking Shadows that, that will be able to give us multiple copies of them. Because, of course, um, the having, you get like, you get to draw the one card and then you make an ephemeral copy of it. And then of course that ephemeral doesn't matter because you're going to give everything ephemeral anyways. Now the stalking, the, the encroaching shadow only works with cards in your deck and your hand. So it doesn't work with copies. So if you cast encroaching shadows first before stalking shadows, then the ephemeral copy they make will not get the plus two plus two. Whenever you have like shark chariots coming back, um, they will not have the plus two plus two. Whenever they come back, they're just going to be three ones because they're, you know, like they're just like the copies at that point basically uh let's see same with you like your silent shadow seer that creates the copy like after like if you hit with a five three and then get another copy in hand that that new copy will be a three one it does a reset uh, but besides that we're gonna have some two very powerful champions as far as attacking goes zed and hecarim are great at attacking and that's kind of what our deck's gonna be doing is we're gonna be very good at attacking we have like dawn and dusk on either of those or of course dawn and dusk on our elusives um and then at the top end, we're going to be having like ruination. Since we're going to have like everything be ephemeral, we're going to be attacking a lot. We're not going to be blocking that much. So ruination should be pretty good at clearing the board for what our opponent's doing. And then of course harrowing, since hopefully we do have a free uh, board. Since uh, we are having so many ephemeral things, harrowing will be a good late game finisher. As far as interaction goes, besides that ruination, we're going to have death mark be able to uh, grant ephemeral to some enemies and then we'll have blighted caretaker with blighted caretaker with both warden's prey and green glade duo doing a bunch of work so let's go ahead and try it out we're gonna go play five games over in normal with our encroaching shadows deck okay so we'll be facing um grand plaza deck so this is gonna be a deck like, so this is just gonna be a matchup where uh let's keep all this this is going to be a matchup where I want to attack and my opponent wants to attack and neither one of us want to play things to block, <laughs> right? Because they don't want to play anything to block on, on their blocking turn because then they don't get the bonus from the Grand Plaza. And obviously I, if I'm playing Ephemerals, I don't want to be playing anything, you know, anything to block on my turn either. So we're basically just playing elusives <laughs> at this point. Alright, well they still take 8. But I don't think that will count towards Zed's level up. Yeah, so the level up still at 0. The strengths of the sun and my faith are one. Hmm. Hey, Krabby! That's my resting face. Radiant strikes! I kind of think that maybe, maybe I should block with the 2 1 so that then if they if they want to go single combat and kill any of these, then their thing dies also. Looking for this. Alright, we'll go ahead and block. The other thing about the block is even if, even if they do not have single combat. Blocking means it's more difficult for them to block my Zed. But yeah, no, I, I thought they would have single combat. Makes sense. Alright, so... Um, five power lifesteal. 
is somehow fair. So our opponent um, kind of caught up there. So I could Dawn and Dusk a Green Glade duo and make two more. And then these would be 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we'd have 14 elusive. So maybe I just go Zed instead. Yourself to the shadows. And I have the option to attack immediately. Or if that doesn't, that they play something that doesn't look like it should attack immediately, we can you know, play a Curse Keeper or a Stalking Shadows, depending. All right, let's mess some folks up. Okay, so attack's going to be just fine, but I think I can also play Curse Keeper. Uh, the problem with playing Curse Keeper is it does unlock... Okay, I was going to say, it, it unlocks another um, single combat. They go to single combat bat my Zed. But the good part is it's something that does extra damage here. My skill is unrivaled. The no blocks whatsoever is curious. That would have only saved them three life, so I guess the difference between being at five and being at eight isn't that much to them, I suppose. But they're going to be playing Judgment. So that can be a card they could have. Yeah, so Keeper or Zed? I did play around Judgment, kind of. At least. You and I have met before, haven't we? Time to get rowdy. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. To do everything. Okay, I have 12 mana. They picked the wrong row. I think my plan is just going to be playing the elusives. I think that's my plan. They definitely can't have judgment and no single com you know not having single combat here is good. So now we know that they don't have single combat. We know they can't have judgment. Um, so now they're basically at the Oh no. I guess they can have that. I was gonna say they're at the whims of um, Sharp Sight, but sharp yeah, I guess that from the trees. <sighs> keeps them alive at one. Unfortunately. I 
That's a good draw. Here we go. This one's trouble. I mean, these things aren't really that scary right now. That's better. And there we go. <clears throat> and then our looses we're going to win at the next turn. GG's. Yeah, question is, is Kalista a possible inclusion in this deck? And I think so. I, I think that you, you probably don't need three Hecarums. And so if you want to kind of split up your champions between Callista, Zed, and Hecarim, I think that that's okay. Uh, you could go like two of each. If you go three of one of them, you'd, you'd go three Zeds. So, you know, you could go three Zed and then like one, one Callista, two Hecarims, or two Callista, one Hecarim. You could do either of those if you really want. If you really, really want. So in this matchup, I don't want to play Green Glade Duo in, in front of Fiora. These woods protect their own. Usually I'd be playing Green Glade Duo first, but because of Fiora. Going with that. Always two steps ahead. Who would trespass here? Pledge yourself to the shadows. All right, I'm just going to wait for these duos after Ruination. That's my plan. I am the shadow. Embrace the shadow. All right, well, since I didn't get to Death Mark because they didn't block, which was surprising. Kinku, watch over Ionia. Watch all you want. My order will act. The problem with like where we're at right now, you know, I could ruination next turn. Yeah, you know, I could just pass here and then ruination next turn. But the problem with where we're at right now is if you know, like they they are a deny deck, and so if I go all out with the ruination and they have a deny, the game's over. And so if I go this way, maybe we have them use other resources. Maybe they don't have a deny available. Maybe they aren't expecting deny. All of that kind of stuff. Whenever we do, or like maybe they aren't expecting ruination as much. Right now they just have lethal, they just attack. This will be Is that all three single combats? Keep running, Kay. No, maybe it was just two. I guess it was just two single combat. Intruders. Yeah, Try. great hand. So yeah, like I, I wouldn't have been able to really I mean, I guess maybe I could have ruination. You know, maybe maybe we would have gotten that. I don't know. I I like my line. They just you know they added awesome yeah. nothing.
Well, no, the only cards that mattered in their in play was Shen and Fiora. Shad Shadow Flare would have done nothing. All right, let's see. Anivia, Trindamir. Plus, I wouldn't play Shadow Flare over any of those other cards that we drew. Anyway, like card, like we would have had Shadow Flare over like something else that would have been in our hand. Nivia Trindamir. I'm honestly not sure about the encroaching shadows in this matchup, with them being like a big time sweeper deck and stuff, like a bunch of removal. This is a weird hand for us. All of our top end spells. See the Nebastian border from here. And our stalking shadows even kind of missing. Nothing escapes my watch. <laughs> the good news about the encroaching shadows is they won't be able to just use like withering whales and vile feasts and things like that to kill stuff. Bad news is everything dies whenever we play it. <laughs> their hand is is likely a lot of yeah, as I say, like, like their hand's likely a lot of removal. The war mother will unite us all. Oh, fresh soil. Safeguard our homes, but they're saplings! Eighteen, but unfortunately, this just goes back to being a three-one now. The Rend the skies. <clears throat> All right, so let's see what we got. Okay, Curse Keeper, Blighted Caretaker is five mana, which means I'd have so I could go I could go all that, but then I guess Withering Whale shuts me down pretty good. If I go Hecarum I'm only playing like Hecarum plus Curse Keeper. If I go this, yeah, we just get like the little one they're all one health. I think it's Hecarim Cursed Keeper. Yeah, I mean they'll they'll like they'll probably vengeance the Hecarim. I would assume. All right, so Ruination does mean that they have to block with their O1. And each each Ruination that we get out of their hand is better for my harrowing. For the thrill of battle. Me 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 me. All right, but seriously, that thing's scary. I th I think I'm I'm thinking about playing Hecarim right now to block. Um, like Shadow Seer is just a three one. I'm not definitely not playing that. I could play this Caretaker. Yeah, it's like if I play he Hecarim next turn. We play Harrowing, but then that play is not great against. I, th I kind of think it is. I need it. Like I'm at five. Um, Harrowing's not great against Ruination. I can go, like, Harrowing plus Curse Keeper next turn. Follow my blade! Your life is good. I'm not done! Do 
But I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna. We're gonna be playing Harrowing next turn. We're gonna force them to have another uh, Ruination. They just played one. Oh gosh. Or I guess I could, I could go this route now. So I could go Hecarim plus Curse Keeper plus Sh Silent Shadows here. Uh, one mana short. Of, you know, Hecarim Dawn and Dust Curse Keeper takes fourteen mana. This is the play to do. Alright, so they needed that to stay alive. Now they need... Now they need Vile Feast. So they have that. Now they need another Vile Feast or Unspeakable Horror. So they had to have so with this line they had to have three specific cards. They had to have a ruination, they had to have a vile feast, and now they had to have another vile feast or unspeakable horror. And they did not have the sec the second one, so there we go. GG's, we are two and one. Don't really need Haunted Relic or Onslaught of Shadows. They those cards don't go well with Encroaching Shadows because they're not they're not allies in your deck or hand. Um, so th those those cards don't actually really do very much for us. So all Targon with Zoe Aurelian Soul. Go get him, duo. Full speed ahead. All right, so do I block the goat? I think that answer is no. I'm not blocking the goat. Of course, could be playing the encroaching shadows first, but I I don't think I want to do that. They have double goat. This is Zoe Ephemeral. Follow close. Well, they got a lot of gems. So they do have that. Caretaker. Shark Chariot. Oh no, that one's close. I'm playing, I'm playing Encroaching Shadows here, and then we'll save one spell mana. But you want to play the Stalking Shadows before the Encroaching Shadows so that the other copy that you get also gets the bonus. So with six mana next turn, I can go, you know, like Warden's Spray, Shark Chariot, and Blighted Caretaker. I can do all of those next turn. Or 
if I if I don't go tear, caretaker, I can go double shark chariot. I'm probably going. Probably going caretaker. No, 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 no. Get back in my hand. I was trying to play you. Ooh, that was close. Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. Zoe. So I guess I don't get the shark chariot back, or I don't get the living shadow. One of the two. I guess. I guess we get the shark. So yeah, I could, I could get. All right. So yeah, we could get one of the two, but not both. But I. I guess I want the living shadow more than the shark chariot. Yeah, and I guess I, I didn't need to play the Warden's Prey. I guess we just get them both. Yeah, so the, the Warden's Prey was unnecessary. The, uh, yeah. Believe or burn. Can I paint you? <clears throat> Sharks don't necessarily have anti synergy with encroaching shadows cuz like other your other units do get like they they don't continue to get the plus 2 plus 2 but other units that you do play are going to be ephemeral. Unfortunately my warden's prey made the undying which cannot block. The next turn, Shadow will be ephemeral. Oh, uh, never mind. I got Equinox. Right. Got Equinox. Not, not hushed. Equinox is for good. <clears throat> Alright. Hecarim or Caretaker? So, I'm... I'm worried about, like, if I go Caretaker, I'm worried about... Oh, I guess Crescent strikes a card. I was worried about the 8-mana the Obliterate All Your Things with Power 3 or less. I was worried about that with Caretaker, and so I went with the Hecarim. Open your eyes. Ain't gonna be easy. Two G's, two and two. 
All right, we're playing another deck with a whole bunch of ephemerals. This one's going to be a Grand Plaza one with the spells that go wide. So that means they're going to be able to like challenge, like you know, like them challenging like our Green Glade duo or Zed, like that kind of stuff isn't going to be amazing for me. But I think, hello. I think I still keep this though, because like duo into Zed is a really good turn two, turn three, and then we have Caretaker for turn five should have like two drop plus caretaker that should be a good turn five and then we'll have hecarim for the turn seven there we go there's the other car for the turn five A very good blocker pesky specter that's a, a good card for them good blocker and then the draw two yeah good good turn for them Also a great, you know, that's a great card of challenge and Zed and everything like that. Very good turn for them. An even better turn this turn. Am I going to want to go Shark Chariot, Caretaker next turn, or am I going to want to go Dawn and Dusk? Shark Chicker. Shark. There you are. Lucian's good. Lucian's pretty good. I don't think we win this. Alright, so we got Dark Water Scourge. That was a great hand for them. That was kind of tough. Not yet done. Uh, we struggled with the, with the challenger decks, right? Like we played against the two Demacia ones, the Fiora Shen, and then that that Grand Plaza with like the Lucian and everything. That's that's just completely ideal for their deck. But yeah, they we struggled with those challengers, right? Because Green Glade Duo Zed, they're they're pretty small. They're great at, at attacking, but right, like we're we're not playing any kind of defense. So like whenever our opponent has those challengers, that's um, pretty difficult for us and then the other one was just the zoe deck you know they had the two zoe's right like like they had like the the first zoe and like their hand was pretty awesome though zoe double <clears throat> um double mountain goat and then double spacey sketcher and you know other invoke cards and everything like that but the second zoe right because we we got rid of the first zoe with the death mark and they had a second zoe and then they also not only had the second zoe but then also you know with the with the invoking go went and grabbed moon glow to make it a one three and so my two one caretakers couldn't deal with the one three so that zoe got me and then obviously the stun card so i played around cosmic rays the eight mana 
um, eight mana obliterate all your things with three or less with the with the playing by playing the Hecarim. But I you know I played into the Crescent Strike with the double stun. <clears throat> so you know obviously if I if I play around Crescent Strike we maybe had a better chance there if I would have gone Dawn and Dusk on the Zed or Caretakers you know something like that instead of the Hecarim. You know, can't can't play around everything. I, I played around the wrong card. Uh, not not the card they had. Um I was impressed by our deck with the like the Ruination and Harrowing both look good. Um Dawn and Dust didn't look like anything that was necessary. Uh so like I, I think I'd rather have like another like hair like I, I kinda think this is maybe like a three ruination. Like that for sure. Like I think I think Ruination was awesome in our deck. I think like and even playing like those games out. Um, I think that that's probably a card that we want is like a three of. I'd probably want that over the Dawn and Dusk. And the the Harrowing looked pretty good too. I, I kind of could see playing... The thing about Harrowing is like Harrowing was really great with Hecarim. But like if Harrowing's just bringing back like these two health things, it's not going to be as good. Other options like playing like... I could I could see playing like another one drop. Like the Caretaker wasn't as good for us in this, this deck. I could see getting rid of like Curse Keeper Caretaker... And going with like more one drops, like Oblivious Islander, Sparring Student, kind of stuff. Let's see, kind of going with like either of these, like the Sparring Student being able to get pretty big whenever we play a bunch of things. I could see that with like Encroaching Shadows, like you want to be able to unload your hand, and both of those cards help unload your hand. Um, so I could see doing that. Like the the Saplings, like you know, always being like the two ones weren't really killing anything that we needed. Like we need to kill like. Uh, one three Fiora or four three Lucian or one three, um, or I, I think I said one three Fiora, but one three Zoe, three three Fiora, four three Lucian. We just all three of our losses were where our our opponent had champions with three health and our caretakers were two ones, and so that was kind of a bummer. That's something else to think about. But I like the elusive part of our deck. We didn't get to really show it off that much. Uh, we did like the one game against the Anivia deck, but we didn't get to really show off our elusives too much, but I really like that. Okay, but anyway, there we go. That's that's Encroaching Shadows, our first deck today. Went pretty well. Went pretty well. Uh, ran into some some great decks there with our uh, old meme tier one. All right, but those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there, and of course, leave those comments as well. I would appreciate that. But uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.